there's great research here showing that we all catch things out of the corner of our eye when we are leaving home and getting on the metro or biking to work or driving to work or walking to work, uh, you might catch something. You might see something that looks unusual. The vast majority of people dismiss that because you're in a routine. You're going from work to your office and you're doing your ordinary life. Uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial alert people will jump on that. They will ask a few more questions. They will go for a glitch. It's a little bit of a glitch that you see or that you catch. Something is unusual, right? If you want to find a gap, you need to probe there. It starts with being alert, right? And in the financial marketplace, we would call this arbitrage. There are financial arbitrage moments in a marketplace. There's a glitch, and if you trade really quickly in a financial market, you can make a lot of money in the arbitrage moment, right? This exists in the entrepreneurial environment as well. So in an entrepreneurial marketplace, if you can see one of these glitches, if you can spot one of these things or detect an anomaly and go for it, you can potentially you know, harness a big entrepreneurial outcome. So if you want to spot a gap, one thing to do is see what's working somewhere else and then ask the questions, why is it working there? What's working about that? What are the fundamental underlying principles that make that work? And then fly it over and reapply it somewhere else. An example that we all know is Starbucks. So Howard Schultz did not create coffee culture. He saw it in Italy. He went to this conference in Italy and he loved the fact that the Italians had left home and before they got to their conference or office, they stopped in a coffee house. And this was the third place they went. This is the Starbucks third location argument. If home is your first place and office is your second place, the third place, the coffee house. So he doesn't invent that. He sees it, he loves it, he picks it up and he brings it into Seattle. And what very few people know about this is that he did an exact copy paste. So that does not work. In the first Starbucks example in Seattle, they had bow tie clad waiters and little white porcelain cups and opera music and a stand up coffee bar. It looked very Italian and that did not exactly work in Seattle. And so he did a twist on this model and it became Starbucks that we know now. It's more casual setting. You can sit and have your computer. You can talk with others. Uh, it can be a workspace for many people. It's the third location. But this is the idea that you see something and you transport it with a twist. There are examples that you can move across geographies, you can move them across sectors, and you can bring old ideas up to date. You can move across time. So Google is an example here where the founders used PageRank. That was the Stanford Library ranking system of the old school catalogs, card catalogs. You apply that old idea to the World Wide Web, you get Google. And at the time, AltaVista existed, there was other kinds of search, but you could take an old idea and bring it into the new world of work and create something really powerful. So this is one way to spot a gap. Look for something that works and fly it across somewhere else and do a little twist on it. Um, this is also called reasoning by analogy. So there's a lot of powerful, um, research showing that if you compare contrast, if you draw analogies, that you access more of your own brain power. So if you're spotting opportunities as an architect, what you're looking for is an open space and you're looking to build from the ground up. Just as an architect would build a brand new building um, in an open area, you want to find a space that hasn't yet been addressed. That often is a problem, right? So it's a friction point, it's a bottleneck, it's a problem for you, or it's a problem for other people. Elon Musk is a great example. So he is in the world saying, and very much building, solutions to uh, solve problems for humanity. That's exactly what Elon would say. And so Tesla is solving the problem of uh, sustainable transport. And Solar City is, is sustainable energy. 
SpaceX is solving the problem of making life multiplanetary. Okay, these are huge problems, right? And as I've spent time with him in my research, he literally believes that SpaceX is the vehicle, it's the next step to help humans uh, take life to other planets. So Mars would be the, the planet that he believes we should inhabit next. Uh, you know, he is an architect because what he's doing is building something piece by piece from the ground up. So if you take SpaceX as an example, he went out to NASA, he called, he was on the NASA website, he was tracking down scientists saying, hey, when is the US space program going to Mars? Who's doing that? How, how come we're not doing that? That problem was not solved. There's an open space. Then he started calling and traveling to Russia and saying, okay, are you guys doing it? If the United States isn't doing it, are the Russians doing it? Then he was talking to some people in China. No government was building uh, rockets that would be going to Mars. And so he stood up SpaceX. And he said, all right, we'll do a private company and we will build a reusable rocket. This is a different way uh, from reasoning by analogy. That's the sunbird. In the architect idea, you reason by first principles, which means you break things down to the fundamental elements, the basic axioms. Uh, many math ma mathematicians and physicists reason this way. Elon is originally trained as a physicist. You figure out the fundamental truths and the elements, and then you build piece by piece from the ground up. So with SpaceX, that's what he's done. Uh, the SpaceX team has taken over the contracts to resupply the International Space Station. SpaceX is doing that at one-tenth the price that NASA did. So this is solving a problem that wasn't solved and building something with the elements in a different way from the ground up. An integrator is a person that um, looks at putting things together that haven't been put together before in the past. And you're mashing and smashing concepts together. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and then sometimes it creates extraordinary opportunity. So if you think about the idea that in the past, a luxury car was one thing, and an all-terrain vehicle was something completely different. You put those together and you get luxury SUV. This is a huge category that all the different manufacturers of automobiles are making now. Uh, that's an example of being an integrator, putting those two things together and creating a new category. Chipotle is a prime example. So Steve Ells is a classically trained chef. Uh, he's an art history major originally. He's not even a business person. And what he realizes is while he has complete disdain for fast food, and he really does, he is trained at the New York Culinary Academy. If you are a culinary artist as a chef, you cannot stand the idea that any hamburger place is got a frozen patty reheating on a grill and packaged up in a little plastic package and handing off to people, the traditional fast food model. So what Steve Ells does is, is creates fast, casual dining. And Chipotle is revolutionary in this model. We see many examples like it now, but it's cooking for the line. So as people line up in a Chipotle, there is slicing and dicing and cooking of food right in front of you. As the line gets longer, more cooking goes on. As the line gets shorter, less cooking goes on. And that is the intersection of fast food and casual dining. So all of us can go into the world and look for things to combine. Many of the internet models are this as well. Many of the online retail sites, discounted uh, luxury goods in an auction format, for example, oh, there's different things all brought together, uh, creating some very large internet retailing models now. So that's the idea of being an integrator. It's just mashing and smashing things together and um, creating novelty at those intersections. <music> Curiosity is what really unlocks the ability to spot opportunity. And it's important and available to every single one of us to continue to ask questions and to continue to believe that we can discover uh, and probe and learn more and more every single day. The Achilles heel here for many business people is that you believe you're an expert. 
So anyone who's already believing that they have a certain expertise in any variety of business or any part of life actually stops asking questions. And that's a dangerous thing. So if you want a spot opportunity and you want to create something new in the world, if you want to keep up in a rapidly changing world, uh, curiosity is your friend. Curiosity is a tool uh, to be alert and to be um, able to see things that other people don't see. Mm -hmm.